That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The King's Man, the seventh film directed by Matthew Vaughn, the third of his Kingsman franchise, which is of course based on the comic book, uh, that is being released courtesy of 20th Century Studio Studios, aka Disney. Su Su Studio. <laughs> December 22nd, 2021. What else has Matthew done? Well, the two other Kingsman films. Yes. Um, Stardust, which I remember kind of like. With uh, Robert De Niro. As the gay pirate. Yes. Yeah, and Michelle Pfeiffer. Layer Cake was his first, first film starring Daniel Craig. Um, Kick-Ass, of course. Um, oh, with Jim Carrey? No, Crowey. I think Nicolas Cage is the first one. Oh, Nicolas Cage. Right? Yeah, and Crowey, Grace Moretz, um, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh, X-Men First Class also was in there. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. This review I'm about to give is super spoiler heavy. <laughs> Yes, it is. So you have 10 seconds to turn this shit off if you don't want to hear the spoiler. So I would recommend seeing the film first, as always. As Yeah, as always. Stop complaining about me giving spoilers. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this film is a prequel. Yes. To how the Kingsmen started. And the Kingsmen is like this organization, kind of like MI6, but they're like... Politically not... impartial... Yeah, and they just, like, fight bad guys. All right. So we find out in this movie, the Kingsman was started by Rafe Fiennes' character. Who is the Duke of Oxford. As a result of his son, Conrad, who's played by... Harris Dickinson. Being killed in World War I, which was a war that he didn't want his son to fight in and shouldn't have happened. And this film is positing that World War I happened because there's a bad guy... Again, another big spoiler, played by Matthew Good. Mm -hmm. He's this Scottish guy who wants revenge against Great Britain for how they've treated Scotland. That he basically pits Russia, Great Britain, and Germany against each other to start World War I. Yeah, that's basically it. And that's it. And of course, that's another major spoiler is the Matthew Good reveal, who's playing... To, well, he's playing one character with two different identities. So for history buffs, not like myself, um, I think this sounds like it'd be really interesting. Yeah. Um, I know I've seen the first two more than once. I couldn't tell you anything about those movies. Um, so when you came home from the screening, mm -hmm. because I haven't seen this movie, I was very surprised to learn that you really liked it. Again, I went in with very low expectations, but I came away feeling very entertained and a little bit tickled. And also, I do find history interesting, and I was intrigued by how Vaughn kind of weaved in, you know, the realistic elements of what started World War I uh, with, you know, this very silly, over-the-top uh, plot mechanics going on behind it, where there's this evil mastermind that has uh, called together all of these notable historical villains like Rasputin and Mata Hari, et cetera, and uh, they are each, you know, acting as spies in their own country to make this machine move forward. Uh, there's a queer component to this that you found very appealing, which I want to address. As of late, we've been getting a lot of comments about why do we describe ourselves as gay homosexuals, and people seem very upset about it. And I have to remind people that gay also means happy. Sure. So that is what it means, like happy homosexual. <laughs> People don't like that we put the two words together that they think mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. But anyway. But language, language is funny like that. As happy homosexuals, tell us about uh, the queer component of this film. Well, so obviously since you haven't seen it and you give a very bare bones uh, synopsis, there's a lot that... Shade, but yes. So it starts out, and I think I need to preface anything I'm saying with some other details. Uh, it starts off in 1902, uh, where the Duke of Oxford and his wife are working for the Red Cross, and they are in South Africa uh, trying to get the attention of uh, Colonel Kitchener, played by Charles Dance, who you, we just rewatched Alien 3. I always like seeing Charles Dance. Who's uh, that? He's the doctor in Alien 3. I don't recall. The one that's Sigourney Weaver. I recall Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. I recall Charles S. Dutton. The, the other Charles, yep. And then, I don't know. The doctor she sleeps with. I don't recall her sleeping with anyone. The doctor that is her only friend and confidant until he's killed. The, not not the, to my knowledge. You just, anyway. <laughs> anyway. Welcome to Nick's world. 
there, here we are in 1902 South Africa. Conrad is like a six year old. Uh, they uh, are at this base. Uh, Conrad's mother dies in front of his eyes and uh, the Duke of Oxford swears an uh, oath of pacifism. Twelve years later passed uh, and he brings him to, he happens to be in Sarajevo with his kid uh, and the Archduke Ferdinand is uh, assassinated, which of course is realistically what uh, caused World War I to go down because of all the varying uh, political alliances in Europe. Uh, because Great Britain had alliances with Serbia, the assassin, the assassin was Serbia, Austria invades uh, Sarajevo, etc. Um, the pretend criminal mastermind behind this is trying to get Russia to abstain from uh, joining the war, which would mean that Germany would beat the UK. I know. Are we talking about the queer part? No, I'm getting there. I told oh. you there are details. We gotta get to, gotta get to Russia. We gotta build up to that. Anyhow, uh, and when you interrupt me, that takes more time. Uh, what's also of interest is Tom Hollander plays the he's playing all three of these leaders. He's playing the German Kaiser. He's playing the Russian Tsar, and he's playing uh, King George of England. Uh, who, as the film explains it in exposition, were all three cousins and grew up arguing, and now are all three you know, positioned as world leaders because, um, anyhow. So Rasputin, who's my favorite part of the movie, played by Reese Siphons, who's of course speaking English. There's no bony M in sight, which... Who I know Reese Siphons from... Well, you just saw him in the new Spider-Man film. That's right. Because he's the lizard. He's the lizard man. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, he plays Rasputin, and everybody knows historically that Rasputin was a bit of a cad, a drug addict. Um, he had the czar and his wife under his spell. Uh, they called him the Mad Monk. Uh, he was professing to be uh, treating their son, who was a hemophilic, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but in, in the mechanics of this film, Rasputin has control of the czar and has kept him out of the war. So... The Duke, Ray Fiennes and company, including uh, Jimon Hansu, who's his chauffeur slash helpmate, and a nanny, Poppy, uh, I'm forgetting her name actually, uh, played by Gemma Arterton, is also, she's a nanny to the kid, but also secretly works with Ray Fiennes on his other ventures. Anyhow, they go to <sighs> Moscow, and the, everybody knows that Rasputin is uh, kind of also bisexual, likes the company of young men and uh, sweet treats. So they are trying to poison him with cyanide in uh, almond tarts that the nanny bakes while he's seducing Ray Fine's son, which I thought was very a very interesting and daring thing for a, a big studio film to even suggest. And my favorite part is where Rasputin is, you know, this rated R, and clearly Matthew Vaughn is making these films for adults, which granted are silly and over the top, but thankfully, you know, for adults. And uh, the seduction at the dinner table sequence works well because he finds the kids so boring that he makes them change, place, change, place, change places with Ray Fiennes, who he then seduces, or tries to, stating that he can cure his leg wound from shrapnel in the 1902 sequence, makes him take his trousers off and is like licking his wound. It, it yes, I was entertained at that. Um, Yes, but going on from there, uh, I, you've already kind of spoiled the film, but I was I was shocked when uh, the Harris Dickinson Conrad character gets killed. Um, because? Because, well, because of our expectations about how these franchises are born and how um, prequels... Well, you should probably explain at what point in the film he gets killed. He gets killed on the battlefield. He has uh, changed places with a, a Scottish character played by Aaron Taylor Johnson because... Uh, the Duke tries to uh, use his connections with the King to have his son recalled to safety back in England. Um, so during that recall, he switches places. Uh, he goes on a mission. There's a on the German side, and there's this extended trench sequence. Uh, someone gets wounded. It's a British mole, uh, but he has evidence on him that they need. Long story short, so America, so the U.S. will. Uh, get involved in the war and also help Great Britain. I'm, I meant what point in the movie, like it's two-thirds of the way through. I don't know, something like that. It, so it, that's why it was a shock, because you have, uh, like you were thinking he was going to be the person who started the King's Men. Yes, yeah. exactly, but but he's not. But his his uh, his actions are not in vain, as it turns out. Um, uh, you know, 
uh, to me, Resiphons was the most fun part of this. Everybody else is doing their thing and they're fine, but uh, yeah, I, I think I just came away being pleasantly surprised. And what I wanted, I thought I would have been fine with Boney M's Rasputin being played in this, although that probably would have been a bit too on the nose. But I do like Resiphons' uh, dance fighting, which is very reminiscent of the, the free bird sequence at that West... Boro Baptist type church scene in the first Kingsman. Um, again, I really I loathe the second film, even though it stars people I really like, like Julianne Moore and Halle Berry, who had nothing to do but look crazy in that terrible wig. Um, oh, she doesn't look. You know, I'm confusing her role in the second Kingsman with her role in John Wick. Three. Three, because she looks great in John Wick Three. Then yes, she does, and she. So what does she look like in the Kingsman? Well, you'll have to bring up a picture. She has those glasses and that bob type wig. That that's right. She did look crazy. What this did make me want to do is I've, I've never read Barbara Tuckman's uh, 1962 uh, publication, The Guns of August, about World War One, and I think we were very much inundated culturally with um, explications on. Uh, World War Two. So I, I think that's interesting and all, all the world power stuff. As a kid, I was uh, mildly obsessed with Nicholas II um, and of course uh, uh, Princess Anastasia and all, all of those things, not the cartoon, like the real life history. So I, I, find, this, I find this period very uh, interesting, I guess, but uh, otherwise I was impressed with uh, it. Sh it's shot very well. It has a, a handful of, uh, I thought, pretty well executed action sequences uh, with Ray Fine's character having to really do a lot. But yeah, and I, I, I think it, I really didn't like almost any of the sequences with Woodrow Wilson as the president because those are corny. Stanley Tucci. Who plays that I don't, I don't even know who. He's oh. just in two scenes. He's just, it's ham. Oh yeah, what does Stanley Tucci do? Stanley Tucci is the U.S. ambassador because what is stopping the uh, U.S. from becoming involved is uh, Mata Hari is sent in to seduce um, Woodrow Wilson gets it on film, uh, so it, so he can't be blackmailed. So another subplot is they have to go get the negative of this film so that Woodrow Wilson will uh, enter the war as well. It's There's a lot going on. A lot of it feels very silly, but I, I think if you're not taking it very seriously and you really don't have any expectations, I recommend not knowing anything about it. So if you haven't so seen... So don't watch this review. If, you've seen, <laughs> if you haven't seen the film and you're watching this, I mean, it might just clearly be ruined for you, but I... I I like the experience of going in and knowing absolutely nothing. So I never read, watch anything. I don't like watching trailers. Um, it's ironic you do spoiler-filled reviews. Or do you feel forced to do them? I feel forced to do them because you like that. But when I do uh, coverage for uh, Ion Cinema or where else, it, I clearly don't spoil things. But I also, um, you know, that was has been burned in my brain as a child because... My mother always accused me of ruining things, so I, I... Well, this is not a therapy session. I, I'm a, I have a conditioning that's very Pavlovian. <sighs> I want you to feel like you got through all of your notes. Yeah, I believe so. I just think it's a, it, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I appreciate queer elements in a, a large-scale studio film that, you know, isn't just uh, something happening in the sidelines. What would you give this movie? I think three out of five is fair. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.